Time to bring in the crane, wire up the cars, and get on with crashing big car into little car. You might have thought we'd be using the old tried and true method of a brick on the accelerator to propel our cars. I certainly did, but we're not. While our cars have to be driverless, they still need to be controllable in terms of speed and direction. So our cars will be powered by gravity. The key to it all is this crane and that concrete block. The cars and crane are connected through a system of pulleys and wire. After a few careful calculations, the five-ton block will be lifted to a height of 25 metres, which will propel both our cars to a collision speed of 70 kilometres per hour. Now it's time for a test fire of our mechanism. So what's going to happen is the crane will drop a concrete block and that will instantly propel me with the force equivalent to 2 Gs that way. I'm going to have the engine running, so I've got power steering and brakes. Three, two, one. Oh shit. Yeah, so I misunderstood. <laughs> I thought the crane driver was out and you were saying to him we're going to go on 3, 2, 1 and then it went bang, oh, bang! I foolishly hit the brakes, so we need to go again. <laughs> that was the kickback, you look like you... Yeah, 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 yeah. From where I was standing, I could see your robot was dilated. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty good, that was good. 2G's, no problem, just don't brake before it's finished dropping, that's the secret to this test. <laughs> So that went a lot better because I didn't start braking halfway down, but when that block drops you totally feel instantly 2 Gs of acceleration, boom, straight down that track. The key to all of this is that the cars actually collide. It almost never happens, but the last thing we want is to unmanned, uncontrolled cars careering off in opposite directions at 70 kilometers per hour. Like the ones we used on our trolleys, these wires will ensure that our cars collide, so they have to be tested and retested. Camera placement is crucial. We only get one go at this. We'll be employing 14 cameras at different angles, shooting at frame rates ranging from 25 to 5,000 frames per second to ensure we capture every moment of this collision. Those nifty little black and white stickers might not look like much, but they're tracking markers and they'll play a vital role in helping us record what actually happens in our collision. Real crash test dummies cost upwards of $400,000, so we've had to improvise somewhat. So there were two options for this part of the test. Um, one was I sit in the car, but that's just stupidity, so instead we've gone for slightly weird creepy virtual Nigel. With our cars positioned and ready, Dr Chris Allington, Home Solutions crash test expert, completes final checks on the crane and its load. Remember, once that concrete block is lifted, the entire crash area becomes live and any margin for error is gone. OK guys, so we've got our crane all set up now. We're about to um, start lifting the blocks. This is when it becomes very real. So safety first, we'll have to make sure the cameras are all turned on, armed, ready, set up before we lift those blocks. So anything you've got to do before those go up. Then we'll um, start lifting our blocks up in the air. Um, when they get to the right height, you'll hear of the walkie-talkies, three, two, one, go, and those blocks will come down. Critical thing for everyone, as soon as those blocks are an inch off the ground, the whole system's live, there's no point of return from there. We have to make sure that everyone's well clear of all those cables. The moment of truth is fast approaching. If anything goes wrong from here, that spells disaster. Finally, it's time for the real deal, collision time. We're about to crash a 2013 Yaris into a 1995 Bellina. Science tells us that mass really matters in a collision. The Bellina, weighing one and a half times the weight of the Yaris, has a huge advantage in terms of mass. But will this be countered by the modern safety science on board the Yaris? 
Will airbags, crumple zones and a strong occupant compartment combine to defeat the heft of the Bellina? I really have no idea. Which would you rather be in? Which car is going to win? So here's how it works. Our crane drops five tonnes of concrete, 25 metres. That pulls our cables tight. Cars come hurtling down here, hit the blue block. Steering mechanism goes away. Towing mechanism goes away. Freewheeling all the way across here. And at something like 70 kilometres per hour, in about a couple of milliseconds, all of that crash science comes together in a quite spectacular way. We're close now, almost live. We've thought of everything, or have we? When that block goes up, it's too late. This is the bit where it gets really serious. Any number of things could fail, a wire could snap, a pulley could fail. I see what you mean about tension at this point. Like, it's, it's pretty tense. <laughs> yeah. There it goes, the block's going up. That means we're live. Crash time is moments away. Three, two, one. <laughs> made me jump. Yeah. <laughs> In real time, the violence of the impact was startling, but over in a moment. The collision was so instantaneous, it felt like it had two stages before and after. But in super slow motion, we get to see what really happened. The first thing that struck me was that what seems so brief in real time is actually an incredibly concentrated, sustained wave of destructive violence. We literally get to see energy transformed from one state to another. To me, it looks like the Bellina ate the Yaris and spat it out. Let's find out how it tasted. But, look at that. Just to open the door. That's amazing. My God. The first thing to consider here is that the occupant area of the Yaris is still intact. You can see the shockwave traveling through the Bellina and its occupant zone, but not in the Yaris. The airbags in the Yaris deployed successfully. Obviously our crash test dummy wasn't up to much, but the benefits of airbags to the occupants in a collision are obvious. This passenger compartment is basically untouched. Like, that's amazing. Perhaps I should have attached some egg cartons to the Bellina because the crumple zones on the Yaris exceeded my expectations. The Bellina is almost 50% heavier than the Yaris so the Yaris had to absorb a lot more of the impact without passing it on to its occupants. It's such a small car, you would think that thing hitting it, it would just destroy it. Yeah, it's exactly like we saw with the supermarket trolleys, that crumple zone absorbs all that impact, and this is all, all that airspace we had before is all squashed up and crumpled up. The severity of the punishment dealt to the Bellina surprised me. See, straight away, Yeah. so that's just pushed all of that. The interior of the Bellina really tells the story. Although big and tough, the Bellina's got a glass jaw. Like all bullies, it can give, but it can't take. Its lack of safety science means that its occupants have to absorb more of the impact of the crash in their bodies than their counterparts in the Yaris. In super slow motion, we see all the science in action, and like all natural phenomena, it has a beauty and majesty of its own. Just like the hammer in the can, it's an inelastic collision. You can see how the vehicles seem to stick together. Right before our eyes, we see kinetic energy being transformed into the destruction of both cars. Then mass appears to win as the Yaris accordions backwards. But the amazing thing is, it hasn't. In terms of our original question, Chris, whether you're better off on the small, modern, five-star safety rated car or the much heavier, bigger, older car, in your view, what's the data saying? Really clear, all of the data we've got from the video capture through the damage we see in the cars is the occupant of the little car comes away a lot better. So kind of hands down one, a little car? 
yeah, definitely want the little car. Even the high-speed video footage we've got shows that during that impact, the little car's crumple zones worked exactly as we intended. You squash back, absorbed that energy along the way. Even though when you look at the footage, the bigger mass of the larger car has pushed in and, and pushed the little car backwards, you'd still rather be in that little car. At the beginning of the show, I posed the question, as passengers, would my family be better off in a small modern car or a large, heavy old car? In a collision, size really does matter. Take speed out of the equation, and big will always defeat small, but car collisions aren't as simple as that. Modern safety features mean that even a small car is able to take much of the impact of a collision without passing it on to you and your family. What have we learned? Well, after all of that, mass was defeated by science and technology. That was a hands-down win to your small, modern, five-star safety-rated car.